All right, Gadgeteers, welcome back. So I'm sitting here on my floor. I'm not sure how good this image is working because I'm using my GoPro Hero 7 to record this. But why am I on the floor in the first place? Well, easy answer is I'm having a look inside my Dell Ryzen 5675 because this week I have some upgrades coming and you and I are going to have a little fun together upgrading this Ryzen 7 1700 computer. I've got two things coming. One is some memory. The memory that's currently in there only operates at 2133 megahertz and I would like to go a little bit faster than that. So the memory I have coming has an SPD or JETIC speed of 2666 megahertz. The BIOS that's in this Dell does not allow me to do any type of um, tweaking on the memory. It does not use the Intel XMP memory protocol. Actually, you can use that in AMDs as well. So it doesn't really matter. I don't even know if it's Intel to be honest. I think it is. But anyway, the XMP memory rating is something that you can tweak and change memory. Well, this Dell Ryzen 5675 doesn't have that, so it runs at the default SPD or JEDEC standard or JETIC standard that the memory is set for. So I went hunting for some memory that runs at 2666 megahertz and get a new power supply if the one in here isn't good enough. So we're gonna have a look. The other thing we're gonna check is what motherboard type is in this Ryzen 5675 by Dell. 5675 is the model number of the computer from Dell. So there were two types of motherboards. One is a Bristol Ridge that has only a single X16 PCI Express slot. The Summit Ridge motherboards are much more upgradable and have two PCI X X16 slots. So definitely more expandability and more CPU support as well. My hoping is I've got the Summit Ridge and I have, of course, supposedly this unit was supposed to ship with an 800 watt power supply, but as I recall, it was something awful like a 420 or a 460. And it's worked for now, but it does have an RX 580 video card in it, so I think a new processor and faster RAM and that RX 580 might be a little too much for this stock power supply that ships with Dell. So let's have a look and see what we've got. All right, well, the good news is looking at this particular board here, I have a Radeon RX 580 sitting in the top slot and you can see down below, there is another X16 PCI Express slot right there. That's good news. That means I have the Summit Ridge version of this particular system, which is the newer, more compatible motherboard. The good news is it will likely work with some of the second generation processors that are coming out there. Now I can see also that this heat sink and cooler uh, that's in here is probably just a basic cooler but it does have the older mounts. The other good news regarding this motherboard is that it is using, hopefully you can see it in there, um, that white plug with the red cables coming off. That is a standard motherboard mount. Yay, thank God, and a standard CPU mount on this motherboard. So if I have to upgrade the power supply, I can do that. The one downside I don't like about this is that is literally the only cooling fan that's in there. Now the other thing I have, you notice I uh, unceremoniously taped a larger 120 millimeter quiet fan in here. This fan's nice and quiet and does a great job. I did that to get air in. I don't know if you can see the grating there in in between the uh, metal of the chassis and the plastic front cover and if you put your hand in the front of the computer while it's running it's sucking air really well through there so that fan is definitely working out and it has helped keep things cooler 
I don't see any other option as far as me getting another fan in here to do anything to cool it down and it's just loaded with cables and garbage. All right, I hit the easy button. Sorry for the odd awkward angle here. What I did was take a photo of the power supply and then I can just have a quickie look. And forgive me, I have to pull down my glasses so I can see better. Okay, so what does it say? Um, total power, 460 watts max. Allegedly, this system was supposed to have a 800 watt power supply if it had a Ryzen 5 or 7 or Ryzen 3 processor in there. That is obviously not the case. So unfortunately for me, that's a real bummer. I guess that leaves me with no choice but to consider getting a new power supply. Technically, not much else is going to change, so theoretically we should be okay. I don't want to pony up $70 to $80 for a quality power supply if I don't quite have to do that yet. I don't know if you can see that or not. Total power, 460 watts. So that's somewhat of a bummer, but you know, that's the way it goes. If I do buy a new power supply, I'll save the older Dell power supply and all I'll have to do is move it, uh, take out the new power supply if I ever decide to build a new system and return the older Dell 460 in there and go from there. All right, guys, the RAM has arrived. So it is XPG by ADATA. Gamex D10 RAM. This is rated for 3000 megahertz. So theoretically, because the JETIC or SPD default speed of this RAM is 2666 megahertz or 2666 megahertz or 2.6 gigahertz, or would it be 2.66 gigahertz? Either way, Theoretically, this RAM will run at that speed in the Dell Ryzen 5675. So I'm going to take the RAM that's in there right now, which is Corsair Vengeance 2666, which, as you know, is only running at 2133 megahertz, and replace it with this RAM. I'm going to do a whole bunch of benchmark testing on it, and I'm going to come back and give you the results. All right, Gadget here. So what was the real difference between 2,133 megahertz and 2,666 megahertz? And was it worth the $250 upgrade? Now, keeping in mind that I did purchase 32 gigabytes RAM because I do video editing, we could have easily just as well gotten away with 16 gigabytes. There's only a small percentage increase when you go from 16 to 32, but it did make a difference. If you want to find out what those test results were, check my previous video about it. Now for my test, I did a series of benchmarks. Now these are definitely synthetic, but I also did a game that I like to play, Witcher 2, and I also did my 4K Render War, two minute 4K render that I do on pretty much all my systems to get an idea of what the difference is and I have a spreadsheet to show that. So let's take a look. First thing, Geekbench 4, we had 3856 on single core and then an increase to 3931 on single core. Not worth it so far. Multi-core, we had 19640 and 19891. And that was an increase of 1.3%. It kind of goes down the line. OpenCL 124, 140 increased to 125, 603. So a mean increase of 1.2%. Eh, not so good so far. About a half a percent increase on Cinebench CPU. We went from 1406 to 1414. And let's see, OpenGL Cinebench testing, we went from 93.28 to actually 91.1, so we saw a negative gain of 2.3%, or a decrease by 2.3%, go figure. Now here's something weird, now I've been playing Witcher 2 on my system, the Dell Ryzen, and at medium settings, it was strange. I was getting a terrible frame rate, maybe 15 to 17, maybe 20 frames a second. However, 
when I put the new memory in and I did the test again, I got a medium settings, 1920 by 1080p with medium settings. I got a frame rate of 70 to 75 frames a second or a 341% increase in high settings, 1920 by 1080. I got 60 to 70 frame per set. I don't think I really got that level of increase from the memory and there's no way I'll ever know. And here's why I'm saying that. Behind me, I've got another computer that I set up and I put in a RX 570 video card and I've been running it and it's been running Linux and I've been getting pretty decent frame rates, you know, about 70 to 75. So I found that really interesting that I was getting such high frame rates on it. This system here is running Fedora 29. The test system, which is the Dell Ryzen 5675, is running Fedora 28. So my theory is I got some kind of update and whatever it did, I think it erased the bottleneck. So that is one possibility, but whatever the case, the frame weight has gotten much, much, much better. And I would actually label this playable. So, you know, most gamers say, no, if I can't get at least 120 frames a second or 140 frames a second on my 4K 144 hertz monitor, yada, yada, yada. The only games I play, honestly, are in 1080p because all my monitors are 1080p. Now, <clears throat> I do have a FreeSync monitor in the other room. So, you know, it looks decent for me and I'm happy with the gameplay. So I don't see any reason to make a change. I just don't game as much as others. So there's really very little point. However, the 4K Render War video. So it came out to 258 seconds versus the previous score on the same computer of 280 seconds. So I did see a 7.9% decrease in the time it took to render my two minute 4K file. That is worthwhile. All in all, 8% increase, is it worth it? I'm gonna have to go with no. And I don't think browsing the web and you know playing some of the games is really gonna make that much of a difference. Rendering files, um, converting files from 4K to 1080p or vice versa, that on the other hand may be worthwhile. But I really don't feel like 8% is justifiable for the cost factor. You do have to keep in mind though, in reality, I probably would be using 16 gigabytes of memory, um, which would be about half the cost, about 120 bucks. Maybe then it would be, but then again, I wouldn't be rendering anymore. So it doesn't look like the memory speed made all that big a difference, at least with the testing that I did with the synthetic benchmarks. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. And if you really liked it, share it and drop me a comment, let me know what you think. See you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.